So today, let's learn about pronunciation. If you remember in the beginning of this speaking course, I said that pronunciation is worth 25% of our marks. And if we pronounce words correctly, by correctly I mean like a native English speaker would, we will get more score. And if we don't, we might get less score. And when I say pronunciation, I don't mean accent. I am not saying talk in a British accent or an American accent. I just mean pronunciation. We can talk in our own natural accent, in our own Nepali way, however we speak. But pronunciation is something else. First of all, to demonstrate what that means, uh, let me write some words here. Uh, air, ear, and ear. You can see that the spelling of each word is different. That means when you pronounce them, the sound that comes out of your mouth should be different. But people who don't pay attention to this, they might use the same sound to pronounce these three words. For an example, this starts with an A. So it should be air. This starts with an E. Should show your teeth, so ear. And this starts with a Y. So it is Y. So air, ear, and Y, they should sound different when you speak. But people who don't pay attention to this might be mispronouncing the thing. They might say, I am 20 year old or I am 20 year old, but it should be I am 20 year old. Or they might say, uh, my ear is paining or my ear is paining, but it should be my ear is paining. Or they might say, uh, the, uh, the ear is uh, cold or the ear is cold, but it should be the air is cold. So you can see how the spelling changes the way we pronounce things and this is what most people don't pay attention to. Not only in English, even in speaking our own native language, we sometimes don't care about this small thing. Because if the message is understood, we don't care. But in IELTS, they check this. Even if they understood what you are trying to say, if you say I am 20 year old, they will understand what you are trying to say. But still the pronunciation is bad, so you will lose marks for that. Today we will learn rules. There are certain rules in English. If you follow the rules, then we will know how to pronounce words. So, before we start anything, we have to know how are sounds made in English or in any language. The fundamental concept is vowels determine sound in any language. You know the vowels A, E, I, O, U, Y. So these vowels are what give sound to any word that you say. For an example, let me write a consonant. For example, T. You cannot say T without saying E. Because when you say T at the end there is E. Without the vowel there is no sound. Try to say T without E the sound will not come out of your mouth unless you say e t e unless you say that or try to say k without saying a the sound will get stuck in your throat unless you say a k so vowels are necessary to produce sound without vowel there is no sound in english and if you are wondering why i wrote y imagine this try to say mm, the sound will not come out of your mouth mm. Unless you say M A in the beginning, M in that way, or if I add a Y here, it becomes my. So this Y is giving sound to this consonant. So Y can also be a vowel. Or in this word, F L Y. If you try to say F L, you cannot say it. How do you say it? If you add Y, then it becomes fly. So Y is giving sound there. So Y sometimes is a vowel as well. Not every time. Like in this word, your o u r our itself has a sound our you don't need y there so y is not a vowel in that case but y is vowel in this case because y is necessary to give sound so whatever letters give sound 
are called bowels even in nepali if you know they are called swar varna swar means sound a letter that gives sound without swar varna there is no swar without sound there is no sound that is what swar varna means so these things are very important and each has its own way of pronunciation like we said earlier a just you have to open your chin and put it down a in that way a or sometimes a as well e you have to show your teeth e i i not that difficult i guess sometimes i also has e sound this o i will give an example in a short while i think is the most difficult one because the o is not pronounced as o when it pa it's part of a word we normally think o means o like in uh, nepali if you write like this o but it is not correct i will give an example in a short while o is very difficult if you don't know how to say it but it might be easy as well u has two sounds u as in computer or pollution or u as in umbrella a uh, as well so both sounds and y we know why sky mine words like those so if vowels determine sound in english language what should we do the first rule is follow the vowel means whatever the vowel is in a word pronounce it exactly like the vowel should be pronounced let me give some examples so here in these three words you can see the consonants are exactly the same s h t s h t s h t consonants are the same vowels are different here there is a single u so the double o and a single o now like i said u has a very simple sound a uh, like an umbrella a uh, you have to put your chin down a uh, in that way so shut not difficult i guess right saying it shut not difficult this double o since there are two o's it should be a longer sound shoot not suit but suit a longer sound suit just because there are two vowels there now this is the most difficult one imagine this i said this is shut if you write like this shut how should we write that the thing is if i write in the same way shut this and this became the same not shut and not shut both are not shut because the spelling is different if the spelling is different pronunciation has to be different but if i said er, like earlier if i write o as o like this short it is not short it is not shut it is not short this sound does not exist in nepali language there is something in between a and o a and o both at the same time a o that sound there is no such sound in nepali i don't know how to write in nepali as well but try to say in this way try to say sha and try to say oat sha oat but quickly short in that way begin by saying sha so again combine both a and o it is not short it is not short but it is combining both sounds so a and o quickly o in that way short sha oat if i play it in slow motion it might sound like sha oat but quickly short this is difficult because in nepali we don't write in that way we write either sa or we write o we don't write both but short let me give you more examples of that uh let me write okay this is simple like a ram not difficult room again longer sound you cannot say room it is room longer sound and r o m rom rom saying ra and saying om but quickly rom in that way rom rom remember this this is difficult not ro not rom but rom ra rom in that way more examples uh b u t but b o o t boot and b o t bot bot 
in that way. Bot. That should sound different from this bot. Now, I know most people in Nepal, I have heard them speak. They either choose, uh, they say either boat or they say butt. Boat or butt. But it is neither of those two sounds. It is neither boat, neither butt. Bot. Ba or bot. That way. Begin by saying a uh, and make your mouth o as well. Bot. In that way. Bot. Quickly change from o to o to o. Quickly. Ot. Ot. In that way. Bot. Or wrong or short. So, this is how native speakers pronounce English sounds, and that is how we should pronounce them. Just one last example. Uh, let me write uh, this is pull, this is pool, and this is fall. Fall. That. Fall. Again, uh, make your mouth say a uh, and quickly make your mouth round o. Oh, all. Fall. And that way. Fall. Don't take a pause. If you say a pause, it will be a pause. But it's fall. Quickly. Fall. So let's say it together. First for this row, this column. Shut, rum, but, pull. Uh, sorry, <laughs> pull. So these are not difficult. These are also not that difficult. So you have to elongate the sound. So shoot, room, boot, and pool. Now this aside tricky. Shot, rom, bot, fall. So in this way. So simple English sounds are all dependent on the vowel pronunciation. If you can pronounce vowels easily, it is not that difficult. But what if the word is longer? These are very short words. But for longer words, there are other rules that we have to learn. So let me write other rules now. Number two. <coughs> so that is the rule. The first syllable takes stress on most words. So, first of all, what does it mean? What does a syllable mean? What is the first syllable? What does a stress mean? All of these things. A syllable is a unit of sound. When you pronounce something, how many sounds come out of your mouth that what a syllable is? For an example, when you say follow, two sounds come from our mouth. Follow. When we say vowel, again vowel, two sounds come from our mouth. All of these are single syllables. Only one sound comes. Shut or shoot or short. Only one time our mouth opens. But when we say syllable three times. See label. That is what a syllable is. A unit of sound is called a syllable. So in a word, there may be only one syllable. Like these examples. Like the. Only one syllable. But some words have more than one syllable. In that case. Come in, come in. You are new today. What is your name? Why are you late? Uh, okay, they made you late. Anyway, what I am teaching right now is English pronunciation. So I hope you can get on with it. Uh, so the first syllabus syllable in a word takes stress. Let me write a multisyllabic word. Like let me write rain. This word has two syllables, re, ni, two sounds. So, re, ni. When I say the first syllable takes stress, means the first is a re, the first one. Stress means use a louder sound in a longer sound to pronounce the first syllable. So, when you say re, ni, re should be louder and longer, re, in that way. But ni should be short, ni. So, re, ni. You have to open your mouth out wide. You have to take a longer time. And you have to use a louder sound when you say re. But ni should be short. Ni. Re ni. In that way. Another example. 
uh, if I write let us say this, this word has three syllables, optimal, the first syllable is op, so when we say op, we have to say op in a very loud long sound op, but the remaining sounds timal should be very very short, timal, try to say timal as quickly as possible, timal, do not even say it like timal, very quick, timal optimal in that way the first sound should be stressed optimal the remaining sounds very quickly optimal another example again you can see there are three sounds disable three sounds are there this first syllable is this so when you say this it should be this does a longer sound able should be very short able as quickly as possible able Disable, disable, disable. The first sound should be long, the remaining sound should be short. Like whatever word you can think of. Let's say this is a laptop here. The first is lap, the second is top. When you say top, try to say top as quickly as possible. Top, not even top, top, very quickly, top. But lap should be a long sound laptop in that way any english word here yeah, water when we say ter say quickly ter ter but wa should be long so water water first sound long second sound short let me write a longer word in this word the first sound is gar and the remaining sound is dinner. This dinner, try to make it very, very short. How quickly can you say dinner? Dinner, dinner. But gar should be a long sound. So gardener. Don't even say dinner. Don't stop. Dinner, dinner, dinner. Gardener. So only the first sound of a word, you should take your time. Gar. Again, the remaining sound very short. And this rule applies to most English words. Not every single word. There are some exceptions as well. In some words, we have to stress in a different part of the word. I will give you those examples as well. But for now, most English words, the first sound should be long. The remaining sound should be short. So, let us say it together. Rainy. Optimal. Wait. No, he did not say it correctly. Optimal. Don't stop at T. That's optimal. 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 Very quickly. Optimal. Optimal. Even don't say it full. Just optimal. Just leave it. Optimal. Then just leave it. Disable. Disable. Laptop. Water. Gardener. Yes, that. The thing is, in our own language, in Nepali, we pronounce very carefully, gardener. But in English, gardener. Just quickly, gardener. That is how it should be. Because the, the language is also different. In Nepali, we write each syllable. We write ka, la, ma. We say ka, la, ma. In English, we don't write each syllable. The letters should make sense. And then it is slightly difficult in English. But still, that is the rule that people follow. Now, let me give you some exceptions to this rule. This is where the first sound is taking a stress, but sometimes this doesn't apply. Let me write some exceptions. So this number three is an exception. So, I hope you remember the earlier rule, rule number one as well. In rule number one, I said if a, uh, if a word has many vowels somewhere, that vowels should be elongated, pool in that way. And this is rainy. 
So what happens if there is a word like this? According to rule number two, I said the first sound bit should be extended. Bit. And wind should be short. Wind. Bit. Wind. But according to rule number one, I said wherever there are more vowels, more vowels, those sounds should be elongated. So we. Which one is the correct one now? Beat win or between. So in this case, always rule number one is the most important rule. Follow the vowel. So in a word, what you should do is in a word. First of all, separate the two syllables bit and win. In bit, there is only one vowel. One. In win, there are two vowels. So the part of the word which has the most number of vowels, that part should be extended. So this is opposite to rule number two. In this case, say beat short and win long. Between. In that way. So when to extend the first part and when to extend the second part depends on the vowels. If this word was spelled in this way. Let's say this is the spelling of between. In that case, bit has one vowel. Win also has one vowel. If the number of vowels are equal, then the first syllable, beat, win. But if the number of vowels are unequal, wherever there are more vowels, that part should be extended. So, between in that way. So, this is bet, win, this is between. Depends on the number of vowels. Another example. In this word, you can see. Ag has one vowel A, Re has two vowels E. So it should be agree. Ag should be short, Ag, Re, agree in that way. But if the same word was like this, it should be agree. Now, agree because the first syllable should be stressed. Like I told you earlier, most words, the first syllable should be long. Agree. Like this, or bet win, like this. But in those kinds of words, where at the last of the word, if you see multiple syllables, then that part should be extended, should be stressed. Again, I have more examples. This one. So let's see the syllables for wa shing ma shin four syllables. In this word, wa has one vowel a. Sing also has one vowel i. So equal number of vowels. If the vowels are equal, which syllable should be stressed? The first one. It should be wa shing. Shing should be short. Wa should be long. Wa shing. But here, ma has one syllable. Sorry, one vowel. Sheen has I and E two vowel. So machine. Sheen should be long. So wa sing machine. So where in a word to put the stress depends on this rule. If everything is equal, first one. If they are unequal, the last part which has more vowels should be stressed. Again, let me let us look at more examples. This is so you can see inji and near. This near has two vowels. So inji should be as short as possible. Inji, inji. Near should be long. So engineer, engineer. Inji should be so very quickly. Inji, near, engineer. In that. Way. Or let me write another word. You can see here. U Nick. U has one vowel U. Nick has one, two, three vowels. So it should be unique. Unique. U should be short. U. Nick. Unique. That way. So it all depends on the vowels. Just one last example now. In this word. Nepalese, lees has the most vowels because ne has only one e, pa has only one a, lees has two e's. 
so it should be nepalese because if you say nepalese ne pa became long should be short nipple nipple very quickly nipple please nepalese in that way nepalese so that is the difference between words when to stress and when not to stress there are some exceptions to this still i will give you some more examples but these three rules that i told you about first of all in very short words uh there is only one syllable so the vowels will tell you how to pronounce that word for longer words when there is more than one syllable count the number of vowels in each syllable and see which syllable has the most vowels if there is a syllable like that stress that syllable if there is uh, if there is equal number of vowels in each syllable then the first syllable of the word should be stressed okay now even after learning this the problem still remains in the ielts test we don't give a one word answer if they ask you let's say if they ask you what do you want to become you can say engineer but that one word is not enough you have to say a complete sentence you have to say a complete paragraph in that case there is a there are other rules to learn so let me write other rules now and i don't know i guess this things you already knew maybe taught in school or maybe not i don't know. it should be a rule number 4 the rule is join vowels and consonants in different words to form syllables what do i mean by that uh when we speak in a sentence or in a phrase let me give one example if i write like this if we had to speak these two words separately then this would be lived this will be in but we cannot say in that way i lived in we don't say it separate we say it together so according to the rule join vowels and consonants even if they are in different word like this word the last letter d is a consonant in the next word the first letter i is a vowel so this d and i you have to join them together to form a syllable so this d and i cannot be said separately They have to be said together. So when we say it, it should be lived in in that way. I lived in, I lived in Kathmandu. In that way, you cannot say I lived and take a pause and say in in Kathmandu. You have to say it together. I lived in Kathmandu in that way. Or just say it quickly. It happens automatically. But if when you are speaking slowly, you have to say I lived in quickly. Or another example. so you can see the word pull ends with a consonant l the next word over begins with the vowel o so since consonants and vowels are near each other in a sentence even if they are two different words you have to say it together pull over you cannot take a pause you cannot say pull over do you know what that means pull over means to stop a vehicle Uh, so if you are in a taxi let's say when you go to usa if you have to stop the don't say stop the say pull over the taxi so you cannot say pull over the taxi you have to say pull over the taxi quick both at the same time pull over another example in this example again this h and a consonant and vowel are close to each other so when you say it uh, you have to say watcher and the movie is movie so watch a movie you cannot say i want to watch a movie you have to say i want to watch a movie the rule is just that you have to attach the vowel and the consonant together even if they are two different words just one more example let's say 
the time is seven o'clock. Do you know the old Nokia phones where it used to say the time is seven o'clock in that way? But that is the wrong pronunciation. The thing is, this N and O consonant and vowels should be set together. So it should be seven o'clock. The time is seven o'clock. So don't say seven o'clock. It is seven o'clock. The N and O should come together. So this thing can sometimes tell you when to pause when you're speaking now there are other rules for pausing as well but when to pause and when not to pause while speaking a sentence can be uh, uh, determined by using this rule like let's see this sentence as an example this first word n sorry first, first uh, word uh, join the last letter n is a consonant this is also a consonant we don't have to join them together so if you speak you can take a pause here because consonant consonant but here, consonant and vowel, S and A, you have to join them together. You cannot stop at that point. You have to say vowels and together. Again, consonant, consonant, you can take a pause here. But consonant and vowel, you have to join this together. Again, N and B, both are consonants. You can take a pause there. T and W, both are consonants. You can take a pause here. S and T, both are consonants. You can take a pause here. But O and F, consonant and vowel, you have to join this together. And you, you can take a pause here as well. So when you speak, you can speak in this way. Join vowels and together. Vowels and consonants in. Again together. Different words to form syllables. So when to pause can also be determined by this rule. Now that is not the only way. There are other ways of doing it. But there is one way of doing it. So join vowels and consonants in. Different words to form syllables. That can guide you in one way of speaking. Let me give other examples of this. Uh, okay, let me write this. In this sentence, you can see this T and E. You have to say it together. What are you cannot say what are you have to say what are again e and y again you have to say together and u and d again you have to say together. So the thing is you cannot take a pause while speaking this. What are you doing? You cannot say what are you doing. You have to say what are you doing because in each uh, combination you can see there's a bubble and a consonant. Similarly, if I write this. Uh, In this example, D and I, you say together, T and A together in a sentence. So when you say it, could I get a drink? So could I get a drink? You cannot say could I get a drink. You cannot pause in that. You have to say it together. Now again, like I told you earlier, this is just one rule. A different way could also be used while speaking like what might happen is to my today you might go home watch uh, an english movie maybe or watch english program and you might say they didn't speak in this way that i told you in this class what might happen is even native english speakers may not follow english speaking rules properly like we in nepal we don't speak nepali properly same thing may happen with english speakers as well they might not be speaking english properly another thing would be in a movie or in any other program the way they speak may change depending on the situation as well. Like the acting style in a movie may change the way they speak. Or in a situation as well. For example, this what are you doing? What if I am very very angry? And then I say what are you doing? Then I can take a pause here. But it is not uh, that it should be a pause there. It is just because of anger somebody might pause there. Or in this class. Let's say I am not angry with everyone, I am just angry with you. I might say, what are you doing? I can take a pause there as well. So it determines on the meaning of the sentence. So it depends on the meaning of the sentence. But most of the times, in a neutral sense, this is the rule to follow. So these four rules 
should be more or less enough to speak most things in english so follow this in the initial days i know it is difficult to start saying like this uh, immediately so uh, one way of practicing would be to get any uh, paper any book which has some texts on it and then underline words each word one by one to see if these things are being applied there or not and try to say it slowly so that you practice and then later on it becomes uh, a habit i guess now let's move on from this to something else now i want you to uh, i want to tell you about words that we often mispronounce in nepal or people whose native language is not english we mispronounce these words often first of all names of countries uh, let me write here so why might we mispronounce names of countries what we do i guess most of us what we will do when we say america we will say m a we will say rica most people say america we will say same thing with australia as well. we will say australia and we will say lia in that way australia most people do that but that is not the proper way of saying these two names the proper way of saying america would be to say a mary and then ka america in that way not america but america in that way a america so the stress should be here in the middle because you can see i gave more vowels here so america in that way america not america remember that same thing with australia as well it should be us trail yeah in that way australia not australia but australia in that way and that is not what we do i guess most people say america australia but it is america and australia at the end all countries ending with ia at the end it is not russia but it is rus ya it is not asia but asia it is not croatia but croatia at the end ya not ia remember that so even this uh do you know like when we when we are learning english are we learning british english or american english what are we learning right now what are these rules for this is exactly neither american nor british this is international english uh you may have seen it yourself when you select some online forms when you create account somewhere they ask you to select a language options are english uk english usa and english international this is international english in local language in america if you talk to somebody from texas maybe local of texas they might not even say america they might say america the way it sounds i love america that is how they might say it they would again they are saying america but when they say it it sounds to us like they are saying america they don't even say a at the front america or if you talk to somebody from australia they would say some like something like australia i love australia again have you heard australian people talk they have a nasal voice first of all mm, they speak with their nose and then they say they don't again when you when you ask them to say australia they say australia but it sounds to us like they are saying australia i love in australia that is how they sound to us again that is called accent we are not learning that an australian might say australia an american might say america but when we speak we should say america and australia in that way now the country names but other things are also misspoken by us that is subject names many people often mispronounce subject names like this so similar to the example that i gave you earlier people say america people say anatomy that is the wrong way of pronunciation anatomy is the wrong way of pronunciation 
the correct would be a nat me the stress should be here a nat me not anatomy a nat me stress in the middle of the word a nat me it is not it is not eco nomi this is the wrong way of pronounce not eco nomi it is economy economy in that way stress in the middle economy in that way all english words like this if i write here this word it is not technology it is technology always three parts technology in that way remember this last part tomi should not be said tomi but t should come here in that and then me the last part no me we don't say no me but we say icon and then me separately similarly g separately technology in that way technology the l or the t or the n comes ahead it doesn't go with the last syllable it comes with the earlier syllable all english words like this so just like enact me economy technology if i ask you try to pronounce this word how would you say it again you are not doing it correctly sai call and say g separately sai call g sai call g sai call g in that way but people say psychology it should not be in that way again remember we stop at this o psycho and we say logy but we should stop at this l psychol and then say g separately okay if i ask you let us say this word astronomy so don't say astronomy but astronomy in that way if i ask you a different one uh say this word this is not psychol say social g stress in the middle social g sociology in that way sociology but people say sociology not a sociology if i ask you try to say this word zoology zoology again zoo stress in the middle zoology people say zoology it is zoology okay at the back if i ask you this word how would you say it mm, botany don't say botany but botany botany in that way. okay if i ask you try to say this word astrology astrology stroll try to try to pause slightly at the l or the t or the m or the n whatever the last one is try to pause slightly stroll g and say g separately okay if i ask you next try to say this word geography in that way not geography but geography geography if i ask you uh, try to say this word mm. this one radiology radiology in that way mm. not radiology radiology again you have to put stress also radiology radiology in that if i ask you what about this word photography 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 just like when we say radiology the l comes ahead and the g comes ahead photography in that 
again finally if i ask you uh let me write um, what would that word be so cardiology cardiology in that way and if you hear native english speakers talk that is how they will be pronouncing this might help in your listening test as well in listening they might say anatomy and if you have the practice of hearing anatomy anatomy may sound strange to you what is anatomy but when we say anatomy they say anatomy and you have to understand these things anyway this is the correct way of pronunciation like a native english speaker does so if they ask you just for an example which was your favorite subject in school in speaking don't say geography say, geography was my favorite subject in that it takes a lot of practice so you have to practice this so this is one aspect where we mispronounce country names subject names now for uh if you remember earlier i said the o sound is difficult for most of us to pronounce so syllables uh, which have o in them like must or most or or for so what people do is people say exactly the same thing for both of them they will say must they will say must must wanted they will say for they will say for but this o sound has to be there most not must most not for but for not firm but form people say form but it is form the o sound form it is not short it is short if you write this word it is short it is short long and long again remember this i bet even some of you don't do it you say long for this as well but it is long o long short form for or most that should sound different must and most are different long and long are different even this word o r o r it is not or it is or so uh, either i go or you go or not a o that sound which is different remember that this o sound is what most people don't pronounce correctly and this just two more things the difference between s and sh like from s let me write, uh, let me write sip and sh uh, let me write ship the difference is this saw sound saw and this is a sha sha with an air to it sha sha and sha a different sound so sip and ship this will be ship in ship remember that sip ship sip ship it should be different if you don't differentiate between these two see how people might misunderstand what you are trying to say if you say i want to sip means you want to drink one gulp of water or something i want to sip but if you say i want to ship you need a big boat so what do you want i want to sip i want to ship the meaning changes when you say it in a different way so if you mispronounce it the listener will not understand what you are trying to say uh like when you say soap it is a so soap soap but when you say with an h it is shop shop the sound shop in that way like even when we at the end of the word it is finish finish at the end not finish but finish remember that the sound is what people mispronounce often the sh uh one just one last example i see i see she she the h has a different sound to it c and she has to be different the the should be there with an h just that and just one last thing for today
and from tomorrow on when i ask you questions in speaking i hope you will follow these rules in pronunciation the thing is you might wonder how did we know these rules people followed native english speakers they checked how do they speak and that is how they speak and that is what we should follow as close to a native speaker we are the more marks we get and as away from it the lower marks we get and the best way to practice in my opinion is to listen to a lot of english speech and try to say it yourself listen and repeat listen and repeat that is what you should do or if listening and repeating is very boring you can try practicing english songs listen to english songs try to sing along and that helps a lot as well just one last thing now these three sounds are similar but slightly different from jil binet joka from ji ginger and from ji if i write this this j and this g have the same ja sound sometimes g has the ga sound as well like go but most of the times g and j are the same sound ja joka ginger nothing difficult about it joka ginger but this z as a z sound z that sound zigzag not zigzag but zigzag the buzz sound z. so joka ginger zigzag in that way it should be different like pizza za in that way pizza zebra in that way so what happens is let's say if i write jtv gtv and ZTV. If you have watched these television programs, if I say "Aap dekh rahe hain JTV," "Aap dekh rahe hain ZTV," "Aap dekh rahe hain ZTV," have you watched that program? Z Cinema, ZTV. This is Z, not G. So what happens? Let's say you are talking to a friend. You are saying tonight in ZTV uh, there is a nice program. Then they will watch ZTV. There is no nice program. But if you say in Z TV, there's a nice one, then they'll watch this channel as well. So again, meaning changes, completely changes when you mispronounce the word. So pay attention to these things. Whatever I told you today, these are the most efficient or effective rules that we can apply. Now, not every single rule is covered here because there are many other rules. So when you speak yourself in the class, I will correct you whenever you make mistakes. But these are the basic rules. If we know this, we will not mispronounce. And the other part is paying attention as well. The thing is, it is not that we don't know, but we don't pay attention. Even in Nepali, we mispronounce words because we don't pay attention. That is most important. Anyway, today this is it. Tomorrow, when we continue with this, I want you to speak in a proper way like this that we learned today. Thank you for today.